it is about empowerment to have a good values base. Uh, values that impinge on the lives of other people and make decisions for them, we know uh, how destructive that is and how disempowering it is for people. So um, articulating a whole range of values is very, very important and I'm not sure what happens now in, in social work education, but I would hope that a, a enormous, well, a lot of time is spent in this area. <clears throat> you get that wrong, you get everything wrong, because you, your values base is your foundation, and an understanding of yourself in all this is important. <clears throat> Let me move then to, to, um, to method. I, 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 I use the word method. Uh, um, I'm sure there are other words within the profession now that uh, are far more accurate. But you know, whether we are caseworkers or we we're dealing with uh, social development or whatever, the importance in the profession of method, uh, or whatever method we use, whatever casework model we operate from, um, you know, whatever we are more comfortable with in a particular situation, it's important to have very clearly that objective um, criteria that we use, a model that we use. Um, I find more and more when I reflect on uh, my casework in the 70s, one of the most important um, things that we did, and I suppose it was a value as well, uh, but in recognising good casework, uh, we didn't articulate it enough, but it was there when I look back on it, was the constant uh, work on connections. So you are connecting individuals or people with other services, other supports, you are bringing, you know, it, it's very much, it was very much the orchestra leader. You know, you were bringing things in, you were pushing things out, you were, and you were trying to form more connections for individuals and families uh, in support uh, and in care. And that sense of connection, uh, I think, is a theme, very important, and uh, you know, if we de develop that, that we would see that going through the social work profession right from the beginning of, of, its, of its development. The ability to recognize that um, working with an individual uh, um, uh, disconnected from family or community or supports is incredibly limiting and it's quite, un you know, that you just don't get anywhere. To, and, and I think the social work profession more than any other profession has brought that sense of connection into, into what we do. Uh, and it's now really quite a, an art form or a science or whatever, but it's a, it's a very well-developed thing that we do. So when we come to looking at structures and the issue of changing structures and dealing with major social <coughs> issues, whether, and, and in the area that, that social inclusion has been working in in the last few years, whether it's homelessness or school retention or dealing with drugs, uh, we're dealing uh, more now with young offenders uh, and we're certainly going to be dealing with this in, in mental health reform, is the joined upness, the connections, the joined upness of everything. Um, to to um, properly respond to our homeless issue uh, required us to recognise more and more the joined upness of the problem of the issue, of the social issue, that homelessness is all, it's a range of connections uh, around family, uh, around drug and alcohol, um, around mental health, physical health, uh, personality issues, employment, uh, uh, skill development, whole range of things around prisons, uh, around education, uh, so, so we recognised that, that if we're responding to, to homelessness, we're responding to situations of people with all these connections. And what we also did 
was identifying different populations like, but there are is it over nearly a thousand coming out of prison every year uh, who, who would move into some type of difficulty with housing and homelessness. So the importance of then saying, okay, we've got to, we've got to work with this population <coughs> in terms of connections and to work with them before they come out of prison. Um, and so we've got some money and put it into that area to look at hospitals and to see that um, so many people, homeless people, move into emergency departments, get some treatment, and move out again. Mm. Um, so how do you deal with that population and what mechanism of connections are like to identify and then connect people that you put in to, to break that cycle of moving in and out? Uh, we know that we've got between 800 and 1,000 young kids, uh, you know, what, I suppose, what, 15 to 19, 20, uh, so many of them are in school or at TAFE, uh, who couch surf, but they haven't got permanent uh, accommodation. So again, uh, identifying these populations is so important, and then providing a system that connects with them and connects them back to other systems, whether it's their family or if that's not possible, with, with other forms of support. So all these different ways of doing things, it's all about joined upness. Um, and that's required us to really look in terms of method uh, in social inclusion, in cutting right across bureaucracies. Um, and you know, you've heard, I'm sure ad nauseum, this whole concept of silo mentality. Well, it's alive and well, let me tell you. Uh, and I'm sure many of you know that. Uh, but breaking through it at times in joining up across agencies and therefore across cultures uh, in different departments uh, and then bringing together a plan uh, is in a joined up way is crucial to our work, and I think reflects for me uh, one of the one of the core uh, components of, of social work. Now, in that though, in that joined upness, um, some critical roles, uh, again, social work roles, emerge because uh, the last four years have taught us, unless you are monitoring supervising and evaluating, uh, you cannot keep that joint upness going. The system naturally um, pulls apart and uh, tries to move back to silo work. Um, so, it's a, so that's a dynamic going on all the time. So in terms of good social policy now and good planning, it's not only coming up with the plan of joined upness, not only getting it in place then and implementing, getting it implemented, but it's keeping it together. <coughs> Evaluation then becomes a crucial tool that you will go into in, in, in more detail. But evaluation, you know, 20, 30 years ago, evaluation that, that I was taught, and it was good at the time, was evaluation after the event. You come in and you say, well, how did all this go? How did this program work? Uh, and we can critique it. 